This is the story of my first 911 GT3 RS drive ever. I have finally got my hands on a Porsche. And not only just any Porsche, I got my hands onto this 911 GT3 RS. It's really been a while that people have been telling me to take a GT3 RS and drive it and really make a video on it because they have been telling me that this is one of the best cars that have ever been created out there and that I'm gonna just fall in love with it. I can definitely agree with every single person that told me that this car is amazing. Well, we're in Switzerland so we can't really play the games, but we can do a little test. Nearly saying goodbye to my license, I decided to take a break and explain more about the exterior of the car. At the rear, it's business as usual. Really handsome pointy headlights, massive wing and a titanium double exhaust for extra symphonies. There are no such things as bolts. Instead, we have a central lock system and behind that, steel brakes. Air intakes have not been forgotten. They're present on the side and on the wings. These also come in carbon fiber. Overall, the shape remains to the true 911 lines from every angle. This model here has the Visac pack, meaning you get custom stitched seats, titanium roll cage, carbon fiber body parts and other weight reduction features. But I'm still triggered by one thought. Even though this Porsche GT3 RS produces all the 520 horsepower that you would ever dream of, from the outside, it still doesn't look like a supercar. And when people see it on the road, they're not like, oh my God, how much does this thing cost? So it's a very discreet car. But then when you're out here in the mountains, well, you can go nuts. And therefore, I still consider it as a sports car. I feel like Porsche have been pretty strategic and smart in order not to push this car to the supercar level. They were like, you know what? Let's just make the perfect sports car. Let's not try to be show-offy. Let's not try to make it sound ridiculously loud, like for example, the Lamborghini Huracan Evo. Let's not have the stupid doors going up like McLaren did with the 600 LT. Let's just keep it simple but perfect. And I think they have achieved literally everything in here. You even have a little stripe on your steering wheel in case you're going sideways through the corner and you forget which direction your steering wheel is facing. I think when they put it on a production line, they said that this car ain't going out of here unless literally every single millimeter is controlled by a real damn German person. Because I can't find one little bit in here where I would be like, it's not well done. They could have done it better. They could have added something. This car has everything. Yes, everything. You heard me. Right on the rear axle of the car, there is a fitted 4-liter naturally aspirated flat 6, followed by a 7-speed PDK gearbox, rear-wheel steering, and... Not a lot of weight, because basically what Porsche did here is that they stripped the whole car to a point where I don't have a handle for the door. I literally have a, a piece of rope. So total weight is 1430 kilos, or in other words, a feather. However, keeping in mind that this car is all about mechanical perfection, it has not been overdone. You have enough downforce, the car is not overpowered, which I think is really, really important and sometimes it's hard to get. You're not really scared 
to put your foot down all the way in this car. For example, in the McLaren 720S, it's slightly scary. You know that if you're gonna put your foot down completely, you don't know what's gonna happen. You know what's gonna happen for the first one, one and a half second, and then it's kind of the unknown, which some people like. Well, here it's not. Here, you know that you're always in control. You know that you can play with the car. You know, even if you're in a turn and you're putting the foot down, you can just play with it. Put the steering wheel one way, put the steering wheel the other way, and just enjoy and just feel great about yourself. And that, this car just enlightens you. It doesn't enlighten others that, for example, the spotters stand on the road or the people that see you balling from outside. When you're driving a Porsche, you don't care about any of that. Porsche is made to glorify the driver. And this GT3 RS got it completely right. I did happen to find one negative point about this car. One thing that I'm not a fan of in this car, and I'm very surprised because I heard people liking it, are those seats. Those bucket carbon seats are just not comfortable. I mean, at least for me, I've been driving the car for the whole day and my back kind of hurts. I, there's something, I don't know, my shoulders are not comfortable. There's something about them that I don't really like, even though they do go up and down electrically. Then I decided to talk about how I miss joyfully holding sticks in my hand. The car has this magnificent stick that I have been missing, for example, in cars like McLaren, because what a feeling, you just put your right hand in there, hit it left, downshift, you accelerate, upshift, downshift, and you can just play with it because the gearbox is so perfect. So this is this is amazing and I'm I'm honestly I, I miss this. Dun, dun. And they've made it to work in the perfect direction. Insane how the downshifts are just perfect in here. Yes, it's a double clutch. It's the famous Porsche PDK system. Well, I have activated all the fun modes down here and one of the fun modes says PDK Sport. So when I first got in the car, obviously it wasn't pressed and then I was already loving the gearbox and now I pushed this button and it just does something incredible. It's like the gears, they just fly up or listen to this, fourth gear, third, second, first. I don't know, it feels like a computer game. In computer games, gearboxes are like this. Push a button, it goes pow, 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 driving. So driving it was. today for driving on exactly that road. That road leads to the San Bernard Tunnel, but if you take a right just before, you can get onto the San Bernard Pass. The roads there are pretty insane and I think this Porsche is gonna look pretty, pretty good on them. So that's where I'm going now. I'll be entering the tunnel in just a few seconds. To summarize my drive, yes, this is a brilliant car. Yes, it gives you the fizz, and the best part is that you can find one for decent money. How good can it get from here? Oh, wow. It's like mega beautiful here. I have to be honest, the suspension of the car is not like super mega stiff. It's obviously stiff, but it's this perfect level of stiffness where it doesn't really piss you off when you're out and about and daily sort of driving, like. It was finally time to unleash the power. Wait, why is there a... Is it closed? Well, that was unexpected. But when it comes to her, you better keep it sealed. Don't you dare. 